Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, actually, somebody should be saying welcome back to me because I've been off the grid for a while, pushing some work through the shop. You know, you got to pay the bills, so thanks for hanging in. And then I got a chance to uh, take a short trip and take care of some personal business. And as luck would have it, that short trip took me to the island of Maui in the Hawaiian Islands. So, I mean, if you got to take a business trip, that's a good place to go. Which brings us to my first point of uh, business here. I have to give a shout out to this company right here on my shirt, Makai or Makai uh, Adventures, and they are in Lahaina, Maui. That is on the northwest corner of Maui. It is a boat charter, whale watching, scuba diving type place. And I'll tell you, if you're if you're going to go and you're going to spend the money, that kind of money to go and do some type of adventure, go see these people. It's a family run business. And to Kevin and Amanda, who made us feel right at home, thank you for everything. It was a positive experience, and they can be found at 16 in the Lahaina or Lahaina Harbor in Maui. Fantastic. They did not compensate me for that, but the experience was worth a shout out. So, today I'm going to show you a highly technical model on lathe leveling. And when I say highly technical, get ready for this because I went all out on this one. Lathe leveling is probably the most misused or abused term that there is. And when people say, oh, I got my lathe so flat, it's absolutely incredible. That means nothing unless you take it to the next step and you combine that with a headstock alignment. If you get lucky and your lathe is very rigid and straight and small enough that when you level the bed, everything falls into place, well, you're one in a million, so good for you. But I'm going to show you how important it is to follow up with the headstock alignment as well as uh, the lathe leveling. Watch out for that word. So let's take a walk out on the bench. I'll show you the simulator that I have out there and I hope that what you see uh, sheds a little bit more light on some problems you may be having with the geometry of your part. Let's take a walk. For the most part you are going to find on an engine lathe that the head of your engine lathe has four adjusters. Two here in the front, two in the back. And on the other end of the bed, you are going to have two as well. Total, one in the front, one in the back. Now, believe it or not, as rigid as this machine looks, the likelihood of a pivot or a bend or a twist is going to originate right here, okay? You have the mass of the head, which is a considerable amount of weight with all the gears and motors and everything else going on and then you have the extension of the bed. And I like to compare this to a truck pulling a trailer with two balls, okay? We have two potential pivot points. It's not going to go this way unless you crash it real hard. Yes, it can go that way, but for the most part, it's gonna to wanna to bend right here. It's gonna to wanna to go down, up, and this end is gonna to wanna to twist. But the twist that is apparent on this end is going to be greatly reduced here because this is more rigid, okay? This is connected to the head. Now just because I can't take this machine and bend this machine around the way that I would like to to demonstrate, let's step over to the bench. I'm going to show you a little mock-up that I have and it's going to make it pretty clear right away exactly what's going on and hopefully give you a little bit better feel for uh, all these lines that are happening right in front of you. All right, this is the highly technical lathe leveling simulator inspired by this old Tony. He did an animation on his channel. And if you haven't watched this old Tony, check him out. He's one of my favorites. So just to put all the myths to bed right now, just assume that these are your bedways. This is the projected center line of your machine. Everything is perfectly straight, level, flat, lined up, headstocks lined up. So this is a perfect machine. Now let's take the entire bench that this is sitting on and lift the bench at 15 degrees or 10 or 5 or whatever. This machine is no longer level, but it's still good. So the word level is abused in my opinion. It doesn't really have to be level. It just has to be true to itself. Let's talk about leveling it. Up by the head, you want to see it level this way. Out by the tailstock, you want to see it level this way. Side to side, you know, I got to say that I'm really not sold on the fact that the lathe needs to be level side to side. You want consistent readings here and here. That is a fantastic place to start. 
Now by doing that, by dialing that in, in my opinion, in my shop, and in my experience, I've used the front side adjusters on the head and the two on the on the end of the lathe to bring my bed into a decent planar relationship. Not so much these guys. I keep up with them so that the head is somewhat level. But let's take a look at why you want twist out of your machine and why you want the headstock to be aligned after you level the bed. I'm going to pull the back spacers off of this setup. Okay. See, so right now we have an even distance from the center line of the machine to the front rail. It's even all the way out. Okay. Perfect. Ideal scenario. Let's pull the back spacers out. Look at that. Holy mackerel. Look what happened to the radius. This is still the same because it's steel. It's solid, right? A little bit of pivot going on here because of the way the machine flexes. But this triangle between the center line and the ways is fairly set in stone. Now, when the head's low in the back, you can see that the projected center line is up. What does that mean? Well, that means it's a greater radius here than it is here. So the parts are going to be a reverse cone, like a megaphone. If you're cutting it, you may blame it on part deflection, but when you take a free pass and another pass and another pass, and you're not cutting basically any material off and you're still getting a cone, this is probably what's happening. Okay? And quite the opposite when the back is too high. I'll jack it up real high for you. Just get a little carried away, but illustrate it just fine. You can see that when the back gets high, the radius deteriorates in the front. Fine. All well and good. So now your genius brother-in-law comes over and he says, hey, let's check your machine. What he does is he takes a bar and he puts it between centers, here and at the tailstock. So when he lifts the bar up and puts it back in the center between the tailstock, well, the triangle at the tailstock is a hard triangle like the one at the headstock. And when he trams it and goes, hey, man, I got your lathe true within a half a thou over 25 inches, you can say, hey, yeah, that's good. You know, I'll call you and get out of my shop. Because as soon as you pull that center line of that test bar down and pinch it, you've lost all relative accuracy in what you're trying to accomplish. I'm going to need my hands for this, so bear with me for a second. All right, you're going to need, if you don't have a headstock alignment tool, and a lot of us don't, I know I don't, what you should do is find a piece of material, Thompson rod, whatever you can find that you know is straight, roll it across the surface plate, make sure you don't have any of that blipping going on in the center, then indicate it true here, zero, spinning, indicate it true all the way out on the end, spinning. If you have zero and zero, you can rest assured that it's in line with the bearings in the head. Okay, now in an unsupported manner, you do not want to influence the end of this bar. Now track it, see what you got. If it's, if it's low, then lower the back side of your machine. If it's high, then raise the back side of your machine. This same condition can take place if the bed is twisted. Okay, we're back to the supposed level condition now if the bed is twisted if it's high on one side let's make it really high get carried away with this demonstration gonna make it really high okay your lathe bed is twisted this way because it's not the same here and here this side is up and what do you have you have a situation very similar to the situation if the headstock is high on the left hand side, the radius here is smaller because this way is getting closer to the center line. See? And if I wanted to really twist it, there's your triangle. Your triangle deteriorates as it gets closer to the tailstock. And the same with the back. So consistent measurement across your ways in and out is what you're going to start with. As far as level is concerned, like I showed you, if we tip the entire machine up or tip the entire shop, so long as the machine is true to itself, it should cut good. A final test to know whether or not your headstock is aligned properly is to take as much of the gear off of your machine as you can. Take the chuck off, take everything, put a collet in here, and face a piece of material off. 
right up against the headstock. Face it off. Don't change the tool out on the quick change tool post. Leave it there. Put your chuck on, put a bar in, let it stick out six inches, face it again. Take a look at the difference between the geometry of the little part that was faced here and the part that you faced way out here. If there's any discrepancy, high or low, with the center line of that machine, you're going to see it out here. You face it off, nice and good, come out here. If you leave a burr, a tit, a protrusion, if the tool is above center as it's coming, you'll know that the material is either up or down. So that's a good litmus test for the alignment of the headstock after you've leveled your ways. That's about all I got, guys. It's, it's pretty straightforward, but seeing what's going on with the different parts of the machine as the machine goes high and low, sometimes it helps. So thank you to this old Tony for the inspiration for the twin rail model. Uh, and that's about all I got. I hope that helps. And you know, believe it or not, I'm not going to admit this too many times, but I had a job one time where I was turning and I was getting a taper on my part. And learned this trick from an old CNC guy who used to program tapers into his parts to eliminate deflection of the material. I actually jacked up the one corner of my machine to skew the geometry of the rails and took the taper out of the part <laughs> because I jacked up the machine. If you do it, make sure you own that machine because if you do that to somebody else's machine, well, you're not going to be very popular. Okay, guys, that's it. Any questions, put it in the comment line. And thanks for watching.